I call the July, August, or July, July meeting of order, please, and salute the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, let's get started this evening with the prior town board minutes. You have any comments, corrections? Move to, Move to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Written communications. Let's do the first report, Aaron, please. Town Clerk's report for June 2015. Dog licensing, $38. Building permits, $425. Certificates of occupancy, $100. Driveway permits, $25. Total check for the general fund, $588. Trust and agency for um, Hart Perry for the planning board, $500. For Verizon and Janssen, a ZBA, $150. And inspection fees, $400. Total check for trust and agency, $1,050. Paid to New York State Department of Agriculture and Markets for dog surcharges, $14. Total for the month of June, $1,652. Thank you, Mary. Approved. Motion approved. Second. approved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Mail review. The Claremont Village Green Annual Community Day Barbecue and Charles Larson Memorial Tractor Pull will be held Saturday, August 15, 2015 with um, children's bounce house, games, music, and the antique tractor display, vendors, bake sale, raffle prizes, much more. Hot dogs and hamburgers for sale and drinks and treats as well until 2 p.m. Event is all day and no charge for admittance. Grounds open at 10 a.m. The barbecue is all you can eat chicken and roast beef, $15 for adults, $12 for adults 65 and over, $5 ages 5 through 12. Children 5 and under are free. Seating times for the barbecue are 3.30 p.m. and 5 p.m. Don't miss this annual town event. Uh, if you want uh, vendor space or tickets in advance, you can call Tammy at 518-755-9374 or contact myself or supervisor. We have tickets. Or Councilwoman Bronson right. has tickets. And there's also at Towsy Winery at Otto's in Germantown and at the Red Hook Chamber building. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, Mary. Okay, that's all. That's it. Okay. <clears throat> the correspondence for the web committee. Do we have anything uh these updates on? Nothing's been new on the website. Nothing's been good. We're all clear of these. Yeah, there's, there's a sign of whatever. It's, they seem to be blocked and <coughs> running normally now. Good. Excellent. And we obviously have this on the website, the barbecue. Yeah. That's up on the Good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to committee reports. Uh, Bob? Yeah, the uh, survey has been started by CT Mail and, and may be finished. They've, they've been there a couple times. Uh, more associates hasn't gotten anything from them yet to go with the uh, DOT permit. So that's still been worked on. Uh, also on, on the new building for, for the uh, town equipment, Jimmy has indicated that he'd like to uh, do some of the work on that and save us some money, but we need to get uh, additional prices in place for the next one. Which we'll work on for the next meeting, yes. Yeah. And I did have a request from a person living on Nevis Road that wanted a sign to identify Lasher Road. And I see you've got that on the road. Yep, I was going to mention that. Sure. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Evan, do you have anything you want to add? Okay. Chris? Yeah, just an update on the, uh, the backstop uh, from last month. Um, I have no additional information as the update. <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I did put calls back out. Uh, I got no return calls. So uh, I, 
got a couple of calls with regard to uh, cost of material, uh, minus shipping, minus labor. Um, so, it, it, you know, there's a couple of prices we can work with as far as the cost of material. Uh, and that includes also the quote for the material that uh, I had earlier uh, for the kit. That's all I got, and it doesn't sound like there's uh, anyone jumping on top of the project to, uh, to take it on. I, I don't think there's a lot of interest there. All right. Well, since we're waiting for the DEC, we have, like I said, we have some time. It's yeah. not a, it's not an immediate rush. We'll, uh, we'll you know we'll keep on and look at the fall. It's slower. People will be more interested, but uh, we may have just buying the equipment ourselves and have maybe somebody else to slow a little easier. We'll find out. We'll uh, follow up on that. We do need to get that. Uh area uh, marked out yes uh, i was going to do that this past week but uh, the individual is on vacation and uh, we'll try to set up for maybe sometime this week okay or, or the following week again it's not a huge rush but i'd like to get it done yeah. okay thank you uh Dawn. this past tuesday i went to the bank of green county the germantown branch and picked up the check for the grant that we had received and received notification a couple of months ago and this is to buy a cabinet, a supply cabinet for the Village Green Committee in the event that the community house is put into service as a comfort station. So that's good that we can finally move forward with that. In addition to the information that uh, Mary read regarding the Village Green and the barbecue, uh, I just want to let everyone know that the meeting is tomorrow. It's uh, not going to help anybody on TV, but it's tomorrow at 7 o'clock here in this building. And I'm sure as we're getting closer to the actual date of the event that we'll be meeting more often. So um, contact Tammy if you're, want to get, if you're interested in, in helping us out on August 15th. Um, I just want to say that back on June 20th, the Germantown and Claremont History Departments had a bike ride that started over at the Germantown Parsonage. And one of the stops was here at the Academy. We had very low attendance at that, and I think that was because we changed the time of it several times. And uh, But it, it was kind of a good test run, and uh, Susan Rock, who's the Germantown historian, and I have talked about maybe doing it once again. We've also started meeting with the Livingston Town historian, and we're referring to ourselves as the Manor Collaborative, for lack of a better name, just so that we can try and, and get a little bit of an identity. And we have been accepted as a Hudson River Valley Bramble event, and that's on the weekend of September 26th and 27th, I believe it is. And at this point, our plan is just to make the three sites accessible and open to the public on that day. So that, for us, is kind of a new thing that it's not very often that we have like the Academy and or St. Um, Luke's Church is open to the public. So that will be good. They can go to the Parsonage, they can come here, and they can go to the Livingston History Bar. So as time goes on, we'll have more plans. I'll keep everyone updated. What was that? The Hudson Valley? It's the Hudson River Valley Rambo, and it's sponsored by the Greenway, and they have okay. events throughout the entire month of September, all over, the up and down, you know, the, the river up to, I know at least until Troy, lots of times it's like a walk through, there's a walk through the village, a guided walk through the village of Kinderhook. I know what I'm familiar with is there's a walk through the city of Troy, and they look at the Tiffany windows. There's another in the Oakwood Cemetery because Uncle Sam is buried there and some other people. There's, you know, all of Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow will have something, you know, so it's, uh, it's usually published in a flyer and that's why you need to be accepted. And, you know, some of them are free, some of them are $5. I know they also do in the Livingston Ramshorn Estuary or whatever is up further. You see a sign for it as you go up 9G. They do a kayak ride across to the Catskill side of that. So these different things are done on different days, or it's all one? It's all on um, weekends throughout the month of September. Okay. So I can see if we can get some of the of the flyers here in the town hall. Okay. That'd be great. Oh, thank you. And yes, I want to thank you again for uh, attending and, and accepting the check on the behalf of, by, on behalf of the town of Claremont. Uh, I unfortunately was planning on attending that in the last minute, I couldn't, but uh, you were glad to have your step up and me do another check here. So thank you very much for your work on that. I told you I always come and pick up a check. Always <laughs> pick up a check. And I'd like to thank the Bank of Green County for their continued support of the town of Claremont. Well, they've made uh, multiple donations to the town of Claremont. So thank you very much. Okay. Um,
move on to old business. Okay, we have a lot of updates. We have a couple of new things to work on here, but uh, road signs for Commons Road have been completed. Um, many of you know we've talked about this for a few months now. Um, they have been installed and updated, so that road is done and up to date now. So whenever you see Chris Nolan, please make sure you point that out. <laughs> but uh, that has been done. Um, Lasher Road, as Bob mentioned, so we've had a couple requests or a request for a, a sign on Lasher Road. Um, I asked the, the highway superintendent of the county to please take a look at this. He had to verify, since it is a county route, if it was Route 4, um, which it is Route 4, or if it was actually known as Lasher Road, and he says, no, it is, the address is Lasher Road. He confirmed that, and he did say that he would get a sign and put it down at the uh, Route 9 end of, uh, of Lasher, so there will be a sign identifying that. And we also are going to put in another request, and I will speak to him this week, actually, when I see him about putting one at the end of Nevis Road, so it also labels the, the, the road as well, uh, two points there at least. So, um, but yes, they will be going up. He said, uh, shouldn't take long, they make those signs themselves. I would imagine they'd be able to spot sometime July. <coughs> um, Mill Road turnaround. I've changed from the bridge to the turnaround because uh, they've met uh, a couple different times there. Jimmy's been out there, met with them. I, they did tell me that they plan on doing doing this when they do the rest of the paving that they plan on doing it mostly in July. So that turnaround should be leveled up and paved and completed this month. So uh, hopefully uh, when it is completed, we can talk to uh, you know, the emergency vehicles, the school district, and hopefully by the next, uh, you know, the next school district or school, school year beginning, they can turn around down there and go down that road again. So, um, but it will be, uh, they tell me it will be done this month. We'll see, but uh, you know, I do know they're gonna be doing a lot of paving around the area. Um, that's part of what, you know, I have road paving down here. They do plan on doing most of this in July. So County Route 4, which is Lasher Road, will be being paved. Um, County Route 33, which is Church Avenue from uh, 6 solo to Germantown. Um, there's going to be paving on that road. Um, 9G, which is a county project, but 9G from the red light and 9G all the way to the Dutch County Line is going to be paved. And um, Hover, Avenue. Hover Avenue is being paved, County Route 31 going to Livingston all the way to Hudson. Um, there's going to be a lot of paving in the southern part of the county and probably be over mostly in July, maybe July, August, but uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of inconveniences for, you know, for a little bit, but I mean it certainly is a plus because, uh, you know, the road conditions certainly needed in this area. So it's uh, quite, a, quite a few uh, years have been needed in a couple of these roads. So. Please be patient with the workers, and you know, obviously we'll have a much better product when they're done, so. Uh, glad to have it done, at least. DEC update, Bob pretty much summed it up. I really don't have a lot. I didn't get a chance to talk to Mike Mason, which is the engineer um, that we have, is our contact person. Um, he basically told me that the survey work would be done. Uh, I believe it is done. Um, they were here a couple times. The second time they came, I believe they were supposed to finish. Um, I haven't confirmed that. Obviously, that information is going to be uh, the key that they need to finish up everything to get the, the bids put together and to get the work started. Um, I would be surprised if we see them starting in July, but it's not out of the question. That was their second wish list that they'd be able to start in July. Um, they still think it's you know it's going to be a couple month process. You know, it's a lot of work to do, but apparently they're used to doing this, so it will be completed this year. Um, you know, and the sooner they start, the sooner they finish. So um, hopefully, they uh, they get it wrapped up and get going on here soon. Uh, that's about it. New business, uh, community house, furnace. I put that on here because we had uh, originally talked about and we actually put a little money to budget to do some repairs to the community house, furnace. Remember we talked about this back in the winter and we said we're not going to do it until the summer when we don't need it. Um, we had k &H Fuel go ahead and do it, who installed this furnace in the town hall. Tear apart, he was going to replace the firebox, I believe is what was replacing on it. Um, once he pulled it apart, he noticed that there was a crack in the heat exchanger. Um, he said typically sometimes they can be welded or patched up. I had Jimmy take a look at it, which is a you know, uh, very good welder. He took a look at it, and between the two of them, they decided that it really was pretty much a very hard place to weld. It really would only be a band-aid. It really you know, needed more than that. Um, so they asked me what, you know, what I wanted to do. I says, well, I says, you know, if it's going to, you know, you're talking roughly $1,000 in repairs to try to fix it, you know, what's a new furnace cost? And, and he did explain to me, he said he thought maybe it was damaged when the heat ran and ran and ran for like, what we knew for a day or two when the doors got blown open. He says what that does overheats them and that's what cracks them. So 
Um, I asked him for a new price. He got back to me with a price. He asked me, you know, what do you want to do with it? It was $3,500 for a brand new furnace installed. Um, he was already in the middle of it, already took the whole all apart. I, got, I went ahead and gave him the approval to go ahead and do it, um, even though we didn't have another quote because when we quoted the last time, he was considerably less than any of you know, the other quotes we received. And we would already have to pay him for tearing it all apart and doing part of the work already. It only makes sense to have him complete the job. So I did give him the approval, and he is working on putting the new furnace in. So that's an unexpected cost that we didn't really budget for $3,500. We only budgeted, I don't know, $500, I think, to repair the old one. But, you know, I don't think, you know, there's any, no other way we could do it at this point. So um, at this point, um, you know, we're authorized, we pay it out of the building's account. Um, you know, for now, we have $40,000 we budget for the, the highway building. Again, we don't even know if we're doing that, what the prices are, but for now we can pay it out of there. And we'll, uh, we'll address the building when we get to it. If we need more money, we'll have to take a look at what we're doing with that building. But I think this is uh, an important thing that we obviously had to address. I'm glad we waited till summer, obviously, because if we did this in the wintertime, we would have been out of heat for a week. You know, so. uh, but he did order, he has it all coming, it's on order. Um, so that, uh, I didn't see another way around it. So. Yeah, I think it makes sense to have him do it rather than rebid it because you don't want to leave it sitting there. No, like I said, he already was into it, and, you know, uh, for And, and he was a little right. better for a very similar. And Bob actually had a good idea. What we should do is probably attach the other bids that we did for the other furnace with this just to show that, you know, he is considered less than the other bids we received. Even though we're not bidding it out, at least it shows that we, you know, we respectively took it a little over bid, you know, to verify sort of how we're, you know, how we're justifying paying him for it. So. Um, I think that's a great idea. We'll see. We'll do that. So, um, I really, uh, we should probably make a motion to pass the to pass this through as a board as an expenditure. Did we, we didn't put this on abstracts. No. Uh, we'll do it next month. But uh, I'd like to just put it through as a motion to accept this and have it proceed. So we'll, well, I, I just one quick question. Sure. Um, we had a new furnace put in here, correct? Yes. And is, this is comparable to the. It's almost identical. He says okay. the only difference is there's a different spec on the gun for that size of the building. I think it's a little bit more, but this is identical for us. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was all. Okay. okay. So I have a motion by Bob. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Repairs to the community house. Uh, the painting repairs, scope of work. Um, we asked for two months now for people to bid on this project. Um, I solicited four people for bids. I thought I had a third bid. Um, we have two bids to open up tonight. Um, I gave everybody a scope of work last, last month and the month before, and then nobody else has showed up tonight before seven o'clock, so all we have is two bids. Uh, I'd like to open them and see what, uh, see what we come up with for the painting of the community house and repairs to the front of the building. So. Uh, first bid, stats. Uh, Stats and Sons Enterprises, John Stats, uh, if you remember correctly, he's the one who actually pan painted the um, church. church. It's residential renovations. Painting repair, community house, business completed work as specified in work scope provided. Project 10,450. That's pretty close. Ah, perfect. We'll get you out there. Uh, so it's $500. It's real close. Yeah, very close. Yeah. So 
We have two bids, one from John Stats, uh, Stats and Sons uh, for 9950 second bid from Residence Renovations for 10450 That's a little more than I was hoping we'd have to spend, uh, but again, that's going to cons it's considered as repainting and replacing wood on the front that needs it, fixing the door frame, um, scraping and painting two coats on both north and south ends and the front, and the cupola, which is, I think, what everybody was afraid of. I actually solicited um, Jennings, John Jennings, contracting, who did the roof on the church. Um, he elected not to put a bid on the amount. So the I was thinking it was going to be. painting three sides? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the back side? Because the back side we, we just did two years ago, and that way I figure the building is pretty much done for the next five years, or hopefully, I don't think about it. Yeah. But uh, that way it gets all done right up. So does that include fixing those rafters? That includes fixing the split rafter, yes. Yeah, okay. I had one in here repair split rafter and splice and bolt. So, okay. yeah. It also repaired the front door crack, painted that with paint provided, and the other door in the back of the building had a crack through you can see out of it. That's the little crack in this door? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because you can see through that one. Yeah. So, um, we did budget. I believe we put $10,000 in the budget, or $11,000. Uh, I think it's $10,000 in the budget for this project. So we're right on the money. Is that right in that $40,000 yes. you mentioned? Yeah. $40,000, $440,000. Yeah. $40,440 in that line. $30,000 for the garage. We have $10,440 left in that account. The only question I have, and that's for the board. Well, that's the thing. We didn't expect that, so that's not budget, but we can come up with that. We'll have to come up with contingency. We're out of some you know, all the other accounts we have extra money left. We can come up with that, I'm sure. Um, we, you know, for the board to consider in a discussion, you know, is this something we want to do this year? I mean, that's, we've, we've had we've, a couple unexpected costs. We've already put it off a year or two, right? And the, the uh, doorway does need some work and the right. paint needs to be done. And, we were having some I, issues with leakage to the cupola as well. Yeah. So. I, I think we should go ahead and do it, and, and if, you know, hopefully we'll save some money on the building with Jimmy doing some of it. If it comes out a little more, that's, yeah, that, that's infrastructure, so we can move a little more additional out of uh, you know, the content money to do that if we need to. If we have to. Well, just to remind everybody, um, we are going to be having to come up with money for the DEC. Uh, because that's not budgeted, um, in the tune of 60000 maybe, something like that, roughly, I'm just guessing. Whatever the final cost is, we owe in 10% of that project. We do not have the budgeted. That would be coming right out of our fund balance. Um, I'm not concerned about that because we have a healthy fund balance, but again, I don't want to incur too many costs all at once if, you know, if we don't have to, but I do think this is Something to preserve the life, you know, the life of the building. You know, the longer they go, the more rot you have, the more problems you have, the more it costs to fix it. You know, I know all that. I agree with that. But it's just I don't want to throw all these costs over in here. So we're getting two new furnaces. You know, I'm talking. So, but yeah, the as, light far as, the, as, as far as the, the DC money, uh, you say you're not concerned. In, in one sense, I agree with you. I'm not concerned. In the other sense, I think that DC is kind of giving it to us. If we were supposed to have been able to pay for that. I absolutely agree with that. Material. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's an unfortunate circumstance that we cannot control, but uh, we certainly take it on the chin with that one. Absolutely. Yeah. But we should get that done and get the We have a in. couple of more bad winters like we've had. You know, we might be sitting here a year from now regretting that we didn't do the work today. Okay. Well, I don't. Uh, I mean, they're pretty close bids, but obviously, unless there's a reason to cancel, you know, the, not to take the lower bid, I would say, uh, you know, put out a motion. Well, I'm not going to bid on it, obviously, I'm going to vote on it. I'm going to recuse myself because he has a relation, but that's up to you. you know, someone else to make a motion to accept the low bid. Yeah, I think we should take the lower bid. So I'll move that. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm going to recuse myself. Approved. Okay. All right, supervisor report. Um, I don't really have a whole lot to go over this month. Uh, one of the one of the big things making headlines, a lot of attention is the uh, CEDC. Uh, 
watching. It's been a lot of talk, a lot of publicity, a lot of articles and paper. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, without saying too much about this, I think it's a good thing that the CEDC is reorganizing. Um, they've done a lot of good work throughout the county. And I want people to realize that because, you know, it looks like we, we've had a lot of questions and, and, you know, there's a lot of bad publicity around what they're doing um, just because of a few instances. But um, they've done a lot of good work. They continue to help a lot of people in the county, a lot of businesses. I think it's a good thing. Um, but uh, I'm certainly uh, glad, uh, you know, to take a look at reorganizing and how they do things. Um, you know, it's going to continue to help businesses grow and people get started in the county. That's important. So, um, other than that, I don't really want to say too much more. If somebody wants to talk to me about anything, you can sort of talk to me after that, after the meeting. Um, the paving, I went over the highway department. They're doing a lot of paving down here. We just went over all that. Um, so the highway, uh, highway meetings are quite uh, involved. Um, Pine Haven is really no update on what's going on. Pine Haven uh, still in a transition funk there. You know, I mean, we're certainly trying to keep positions filled. It's very difficult. Uh, we've actually hired an agency to help us pull in uh, full-time workers uh, just to try to keep the staff adequately. And uh, they have brought the census up, which is kind of annoying to tell you the truth because this is what I said all along, if you just have the right person or spend the right you know amount of time working on an issue, you can resolve it. Uh, they brought the census up from 78% to, to almost 100% um, you know, in a few, six months. And you know, there's no reason why the county couldn't have done that, why we continue to own it, but the lack of, I don't want to say lack of uh, enthusiasm, the lack of interest on maintaining and owning the home by the county, just they let it go. And it's unfortunate because we should, we should have retained ownership of the county home. But water over the bridge. So uh, the census is up. They're just, uh, again, they, they do have enough people to take care of the residents, but they certainly have some vacancies they'd like to fill. And there's a lot of overtime being paid to go to shifts instead of uh, full-time regular help. So that whole transition will take probably another six to eight months, I would guess, they're telling me, uh, before we actually turn on, you know, change hands and turn over. So um, I'll keep everybody updated on any major changes as we go. Um, I don't really have a whole lot more to discuss uh, to update anybody on. If anybody, like I said, has any questions on county business, please come see me, talk to me, ask me uh, any questions. I'll certainly tell you whatever I can and clear up any questions. Supervisor report. Um, just wanted to mention again, Mary went over very nicely, read the article uh, for August. I know we'll, we'll say it again in August meeting, but uh, August 15th is our annual barbecue this year. Uh, we'd like to see a nice turnout this year. Last year we, uh, we did not hold the event, and uh, we're doing a lot more advertising. We certainly uh, have tickets for sale a lot more you know, around, the, around the area. Um, I think uh, you know, we're going to have a nice turnout this year. Unfortunately, myself, I'll be coming back in town that day, so I hope to be here, but I won't be here for the whole thing. I'll be back late, but uh, I really hope that uh, everybody can uh, turn out and support the event. So, um, other than that, I don't, uh, I don't have a lot of time for this either. I'm going to meet with Jimmy and discuss the, again, the building that Bob talked about, the highway garage, um, building addition back there. Uh, we'll try to get the numbers buttoned up for next month. And then uh, we can have a discussion on you know, where we're going with this, what the, you know, try to get a better idea what these you know, busts are going to be, and then uh, decide if we're going to do that this year. There, there is a need to do that because we do have equipment that sits outside and does have some wear and tear because of that. Absolutely. I, I agree with it. Just uh, timing, you know, I mean, we'd have to discuss, you know, yeah. if we, uh, yeah. you know, the price and what it is and you know, time. Yeah. Okay, and just to recap one topic, the road signs on Commons Road have been completed. They have been put up. I just want to make sure we have had somebody join our audience that uh, would like to hear that. I just want to make sure that that's good to put out there again after how many months. So other than that, we'll move on to the hash drives. Make a motion that we pay the highway abstract number seven, voucher 74 through 85, 
for the sum of five thousand seven hundred ninety-eight and seventy-eight cents. Second. Favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'll make a motion to pay trusted agency abstract number five. Vouchers number 21 through 30 in the amount of $1,928.60. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. I don't have a tape for this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh-oh. Uh, there it is. <laughs> I do. You can't have those up your head? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. We will pay general abstract number seven, vouchers number 163 through 195 in the amount of $6,037.65. Or $6,037.65. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. There was a space between the six and the We'll move on to uh, public comment. Communications to the board. Not everybody wants. Uh, Mr. Nolan, would you like to would you like to say something? Uh, I just uh, maybe I missed when the next meeting related to the uh, barbecue was going. Tomorrow night at seven o'clock, right here. If you can make it, that'd be great. Any other comments, questions? No comment about the signs. Oh, well, thank you so much for the <laughs> did, did you notice that they were up? I did. No, I noticed the ones that I thought were a problem were down. Oh, okay. Well, they revalued the whole road and made it what it's supposed to be, supposedly, by the design crew, so. It makes sense to me. Good. Excellent. Okay. No other comment? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you.